What's happening? Thanks for joining me here on this Wednesday night. It is very much appreciated. Back for another podcast because we got some breaking news. And this time it's Celtics breaking news. Adrian Wojnarowski reporting just about 90 minutes ago that Drew Holiday has agreed to a contract extension with the Boston Celtics. It's four years, $135 million. It's a big money extension for Drew. Adam Himmelsbach of the Boston Globe reports that the fourth year in this contract extension is a player option. Drew Holiday decided to decline his player option that was set for next year. So he declines next year's player option so he can pick up this long-term security from the Celtics for $135 million. Now, this year was going to be most likely Holiday's last, right? When when the trade was completed during the offseason, what was it, October 1st, right before this season tipped off, he had one year left on his deal, technically speaking, because he was not going to pick up that player option. He was going to go into free agency and try to get a long-term deal done with somebody if it wasn't the Celtics. So he gets rid of that player option next year. And actually, when you look at the terms of his contract, the extension he just signed, he's going to make less money next year. But in the long term, he's obviously going to make tons of cash. I mean, he's 33 years old. This is most likely the final contract of his career. So take the buck 35 and run with it instead of picking up the player option or walking into free agency after the playoffs. Holiday will make $30 million next year under this new deal. He was set to make just over $37 million next year. Now, the Celtics, Wick Grosbeck gets some savings here. The Celtics will save $35 million in tax payments because of the less money Holiday is set to make next season. So Holiday gets the long-term extension. He gets the security. He gets the Brinks truck. But Wick Grosbeck and the Celtics, they lessen that tax hit that they would have got if Holiday stayed on the money he was set to make on that player option. Let's just say this about Wick Grosbeck. My man is not afraid of spending money. And I know that's been a conversation in Boston. All the sports fans in this area, the sports media, podcast hosts, yapping heads, pundits, we all talk about spending, right? Robert Kraft, is he spending enough? John Henry, definitely not spending enough. Here's Wick Grosbeck just throwing cash on top of cash on top of cash on top of cash. Wick Grosbeck is not afraid of your luxury tax, your tax apron. He ain't afraid. I mean, when you look at next year's payroll, it's humongous. Jalen Brown making over $49 million. Tatum making 34.8. Holiday will now make $30 million. Porzingis will make 29.2. Derek White makes $20 million. This team right now on the books for next year. You're talking about $196 million. It's just an astronomical amount of money that Wick Grosbeck is putting down and telling the world we want to win a championship. And as a matter of fact, we want to win multiple championships. So everybody, I know this was part of the story. If you go back a few years ago, there were actually people in Boston saying that Wick Grosbeck and the Celtics didn't want to spend money. They didn't want to spend the money that they needed to spend. I thought it was outrageous then, and now it looks straight up comical because this team continues to spend money at a ridiculous pace. And it's all in the name of Banner 18 and hopefully 19 and maybe even freaking 20 if they continue to play the way they've played in this regular season. Now, as part of this, because you sign Holiday to an extension and because the payroll is going to be astronomical next year, because of that, The Celtics are now going to be an apron two team, right? They were an apron two team this year. They are now set to be an apron two team next year. And I know the NBA, CBA can glaze your eyes over. I get it. Trust me, I get it. But I'm going to tell you what the apron two means and how it it is going to significantly handcuff the Celtics from adding to this team via outside bodies. Apron two teams. Salary matches and trades now have to be within 110% instead of 125% for non-taxpayer teams. The Celtics cannot acquire players and sign and trade deals in the offseason if the incoming money is above the apron. 
That can't work out for them. They cannot sign a player that's waived during the regular season if that player's salary exceeded the mid-level exception, which this year, by the way, was $12.2 million. So, for example, Gordon Hayward got waived this year. Celtics could not sign Gordon Hayward if they wanted to because he made more than the mid-level. So that wasn't going to work. The Celtics also will not be able to use the taxpayer mid-level exception. So that's out the window. If a team remains in the second apron three out of five seasons, their first round pick will automatically move to the end of the round beginning next season. And yes, the Celtics are set to be an apron two team in back-to-back years if they run this back. Your first round pick seven years out cannot be traded beginning next season. Salaries cannot be aggregated or combined to trade for a single player making more money. So no longer can you put together two or three contracts and trade for somebody who's making more money than those contracts together make. Teams can't use trade exceptions created from a prior year, and they can no longer use cash and trade. So the fact that the Celtics are going to be an apron two team in back-to-back years will severely, severely handcuff any options or opportunities they have to add to this team from the outside. We have to understand that that is part of this deal. And that's why I just ran down that list because we just can't look at this in a vacuum. We've got to look at this as far as big picture and how it impacts the rest of this roster and the rest of this plan and what Brad Stevens can do and can't do moving forward. Now, Drew Holiday, you had three options with him, right? If you're Brad Stevens, you've got three options. You can either trade a big name or two from the roster this offseason, create some space and see if that'll work out, right? Shed a couple of names in case you don't win the title. Do something drastic. Do something dramatic. Shake up the roster. That was one option. Another option was you just let Drew Holiday walk. You let him walk into free agency, but you get nothing for him. Sign and trade deal, very unlikely. So you were left with making a dramatic trade during the offseason, and right now you've won, what, 62 games? Why are you going to make something so dramatic happen to this roster? You've been a dominant team. You are the favorites to win the championship. No guarantee, but you're the favorites. So you either make a dramatic, drastic change to this roster, or you let Holiday walk into free agency, or you sign him to an extension. And Stevens picked door number three. And I agree with door number three. I don't want to tinker with this team right now. Even if they don't finish their story, even if they don't win Banner 18 in June, I still don't want to tinker with this team. I will take this dominant basketball team for another year. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. No problem with that. I'm willing to do that. Holiday joined them in October. I would expect that they would be even better next year as they learn more about each other, right? So I have no issue with bringing Holiday back and trying to keep this team together for as long as possible. How long is the question? I'm going to get to that. But first, if you're stopping by, give us a thumbs up. Every single like counts. Every single like matters. If you're watching on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, we're streaming to all three of those places right now live on this Wednesday night talking about the Celtics extending Drew Holiday Four years, $135 million. The fourth year is a player option. So give us those likes. Give us those thumbs. More eyeballs as we slap that YouTube algorithm upside its head. So please like. And if you're joining us for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. That also helps us out. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Pods on demand, rate and review. All right. So how long can this team stay intact? What's the window? I said this before the season began. I said it when they traded for Porzingis. I said it when they traded for Holiday. And I'll say it right now. This team's window, two years. Two, and that's counting this season. Two-year window. Unless Wick Grosbeck wants to go to the Golden State Warriors' lengths and pay even more money, what we're looking at is pretty much a two-year window. Why is that? Well, next year, Jalen Brown's money on that big extension he signed last offseason, that money is going to kick in. So that big, fat contract extension will be on the books beginning next year. Then you have Jason Tatum. And Jason Tatum is going to sign that 
obnoxious Supermax contract. He's going to stay here in Boston because he's going to make so much damn money and because he likes it and hopefully because he's won a championship. But Tatum's big money contract extension, that will kick in for 25-26. So right now the books, they're pretty heavy. They get even heavier next year. And then you've got to deal with Tatum's contract kicking in, which means they get even heavier in 25-26. I would not anticipate the Celtics holding on to everybody beyond 25-26 because now you're talking about re-signing other guys. It would just be a monstrous, monstrous payroll. And I don't think that'll happen. So this is all about this season, making this run in the postseason, and it's about next year. It's about trying to get two championships, and then you reevaluate. That's truly what this is. If we shot Brad Stevens in the tuchus with some truth serum, he would say it. Signing Holiday to an extension. Signing Porzingis to his extension post-trade. Signing Jalen Brown to his extension. Eventually, Jason Tatum. They talked to Derek White, and we'll get to White in a minute. But all of these moves, all of these moves are for this year and next year. And then I truly believe after the 2024-2025 season, the Celtics will reevaluate, and they are bound to make at least one big move, if not multiple big moves. But for now, let's enjoy this. Let's enjoy Wick Grosbeck willing to pay the money he's going to pay to put this team on the floor. Let's appreciate what this team has done during the regular season and hope they can carry this thing through the postseason. Now, Derek White. What's the impact on Derek White? This one's interesting. So Derek's on the books next year for about $20 million. And the Celtics spoke to White about an extension going back, you know, several months ago. They weren't able to complete the task. Stevens understood the mission, but the mission was not completed. And so Derek White has one more year left on his contract. He would like to stay, but will he stay? Will you be able to sign him to that contract extension? Because you know one thing, what Derek White's doing right now is he's looking at that contract that Holiday just signed, and he's saying to himself, I need to make that money. I should be making $30 million a year. If you want to sign me, you want to give me this extension, I want $30 million. That's where it starts. Porzingis is making 29 Holiday is making 30 Derek White would argue for 30 And he would deserve to argue for 30 the way he's played on both ends of the floor. So how does this impact Derek White? They weren't able to reach a deal this year. The Celtics, the good news, have his bird rights, which means they have no limit. I mean, they could sign him to whatever. Doesn't matter. The apron doesn't matter. None of that matters. He is their own player. So if they wanted to sign Derek White for $30 million a year, they could sign White for $30 million a year if that's what they wanted to do. Inevitably, the question is, are they going to be willing to carry all of these contracts? Are you going to be willing to pay Holiday, White, and Jalen Brown as your old school one, two, three? Are you willing to pay the freight? That's a ton of money. Ton of money. It is difficult for me to imagine that this team, again, will stay intact beyond 24-25. So whether that means you sign White to a contract extension and then you trade Holiday, or you sign White to the extension and then you trade Porzingis, or you sign White to the extension and then you trade Jalen Brown, something will have to give eventually. Eventually. And I do think this contract to Holiday makes it more difficult for the Celtics to get a White deal done because, again, he's looking at the deal and he's saying, that's what I want. If you let Holiday walk, then you could have turned around and given Derek White $27, 28000000 million a year long term and you got him wrapped up. So now there's some question about White. And do you go into next year with Derek White on the books? I mean, I think if they win a championship, they'll run it back, right? We all feel pretty comfortable about that. If, if you seal the deal, you win a championship, they will run this back. If they don't win a championship, it'll be interesting to see what Brad Stevens does. 
because we know Stevens is as aggressive as a GM can get. So will he make a big move this offseason if they fail to get Banner 18? And will that big move involve Derek White because he's walking into the final year of his contract and you know you can't pay everybody? That's a question that we've got to think about with this deal getting done between the Celtics and Holiday. How does it impact Derek White? Celtics can pay him whatever they want with the bird rights. Now, I talked about the tax penalties. What saves the Celtics for next year? Because, again, they are significantly handcuffed. I mean, they are not going to be able to easily add outside talent. Unless you try to sign a bunch of guys to vet minimum deals, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So when you look at why the Celtics would do this, put themselves into that second apron territory for a second straight year, it's because they have the depth to do it. If you only have three or four guys signed to big contracts, then this move becomes much more tough to make if you're a team. But because the Celtics have the depth, bringing Holiday back makes sense. Because right now, when you look at the payroll for the Celtics, their top eight are signed through next year. Their top eight are back. We all know the top six, Pritchard, Hauser, both signed through next season. So next year, you will have the same top eight guys being your top eight guys as long as everybody stays healthy. On top of that, not only are you bringing back your top eight, but you have Jordan Walsh. I would hope that Walsh is ready to take a step next year and play some minutes for this team. So you have Walsh in Maine, right? Davison, is he going to be somebody that is part of this mix? Kada just got a deal done. So Kada will be around. Springer, who you dealt for, he has a team option next year. So the reason why you can do this, the reason why you can pull this trigger and you can say second apron team, not really worried about it, even though it's a second straight year, is because you could literally have all of those guys back, including Xavier Tillman. That was one of the big pieces of the puzzle, acquiring Tillman at the deadline. When you acquired Tillman, you acquired his bird rights, which means the Celtics can pay him more money than anybody else. And so when you start to look at Al Horford, Al's last year on his contract is next season. In a perfect world, you sign Tillman to a long-term contract extension this offseason on an affordable deal through his bird rights, and then when Al is ready to walk away, you then replace Al with Tillman. So right now, this team is set this year and next year. If you want to add Tillman into your top rotation, you have your top nine coming back next year if you re-sign him to go along with Kata, to go along with Jordan Walsh, to go along with Springer. If you want Springer, you would pick up that team option. So that's how you can get away with it. You can get away with it because you don't have to go out. You don't have to go out and get bodies from the outside and bring them in because you have all of the bodies. Literally, what do you need? Like you'd have to go out and maybe get an athletic scoring wing or something like that, but you're talking about the 10th, 11th guy on this roster. So if they win the title, I think we'll have a very slow quiet offseason for the Celtics for the first time since Stevens took over. If they win a championship, if not, all bets are off because it's Brad Stevens. Ryan Shaw jumps in with a chat. How long do we have KP for? He's a crucial piece this year. He signed a two-year extension that goes beyond this year. So he would be an expiring contract in 25-26, which is why I say, when we look at this window, we're looking at this year and we're looking at next year because then once you get to 25-26, you have Porzingis on that expiring contract 
You've got Jaden and Jason Tatum on huge deals, super max deals, banana deals, right? Just making tons of money, 35% of the cap. So you would have those two contracts. You get the holiday money. So you got Porzingis signed for two years after this. That was part of the deal. When they traded for Porzingis, they signed him to a two-year contract extension. So that's how long you got him going. DJ Daniel, I don't really know what this is. The math ain't math in long term now. Yeah, long term, tough. Long term, it's, look, inevitably, they're going to have to make a deal. They're going to have to make a deal down the road. They're going to probably have to make multiple deals. But Stevens is not worried about that right now. He's worried about winning a championship this year and hopefully, fingers crossed, next year. That, that's what he's looking at. That's what he wants. And so if you win a championship, if you win two championships, then all of this talk about, you know, down the road means a lot less, right? Like I would trade a couple of championships for, okay, well, we eventually have to move on from Holiday or White or Porzingis because you say you made the run. You made the run that you're trying to make. So it's just whether or not they can do that. The one thing I would say is that you have all of these big contracts, which again allows Stevens to shift gears if he needs to. If he needs to pivot, he can pivot. If you don't win this year and he wants to go into the offseason and make a significant move, he can do that because he has lots of these big contracts and he can trade a guy for a couple, right? Not to match the money and all of that. So it, it, it does allow him some wiggle room with another big contract on the books because it allows you to possibly move on from players. Again, you can't aggregate salary to combine to trade for a single player making more money, but you can you can trade a single player for other guys as long as those salaries match within 110% of the outgoing salary. All right, don't forget to give us that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to hit 3,000 subscriptions by the end of this week. We're getting closer. So every thumb helps out. Trust me, it takes a second of your time. Just give us that like if you like the content. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're listening, on demand, Spotify, Apple Pods, rate and review. Another thing about how all of this works, because you have all these guys on the roster, because all this money is on the payroll, and because you are limited in your ability to go out and get that outside talent that we talked about, you're really just banking on vet minimum deals. The back end of your bench now has to be filled up by rookies. The drafting for this team is going to be important. Hitting on your draft picks is going to be important because you can't go out there and you can't sign big money deals. You can't go out there and sign a mid-level exception. You can't do those kinds of things. You have to hit on your picks. Now, those guys don't have to be all-stars because, again, you have your top 9, 10 returning next year if you re-sign Tillman on the bird rights. But you need to start getting younger and you need to start building that bench with more affordable talent. So that way, after this two-year window, if you've got to deal some of these big contracts, you have younger talent cultivated that will now develop. And in 25, 26, 26, 27, 27, 28, now those young guys you're drafting currently in this June's draft, which unfortunately is not a great draft, but over the next couple of years, hitting on your picks and hitting on those second round picks is going to be crucial. For example, if you hit on Jordan Walsh, that's huge. You got him in the second round. He is, you know, he is a wing that will defend, gets his offense going a little bit. If he ends up being somebody that you can bank on to find somebody that can give you even 15 minutes a night in the second round is just huge bang for the buck. So the importance of the draft, I believe it ramps up because now the books, the salaries, and how this is most likely a two-year window. So you now have to hit on some of those picks. You can't be trading a ton of picks. You just can't do it. You've got to hit on those draft picks. You've got to hit on them and develop them the right way. It's the affordable way to build the bench and develop talent. 
That's what you've got to do. You have to hit in the draft. Now, if you asked me, I would say that a deal would be very likely next offseason. I'm not saying this coming offseason. Not saying after this postseason. But the next year, I think you could see a, a deal, if not a couple of deals done. Because you got the Porzingis expiring, Holiday's deal. You know, Holiday, again, he's 33 years old. He's going to be 35 in, in a year or two. You're looking at a 35-year-old making 30 million or so. You know, if you don't win a if you don't win a title, ultimately the question is going to be do you keep Jalen Brown or do you surround Tatum with different guys? So right now, enjoy it, soak it up, love it for all it's worth. Appreciate Wick Grosbeck spending the kind of schadol that he's spending to keep this team together. Credit Brad Stevens for being aggressive and trading for guys like Porzingis and Holiday and then being aggressive to get extensions done. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy this postseason. Enjoy next year. But understand, this ride can't go on forever. At some point, one or two of these guys, they're going to have to get off the ride. Eventually. Super chat. Nick deserves an extension too. LOL. Sorry, I couldn't afford a super max deal here. Well, Ryan, thank you. I appreciate the super chat. My fourth podcast today. I did one this morning. I recorded one with Greg Bedard. Uh, then I did one for my Patreon page. If you want to check that out, patreon.com slash Nick Cattle, C-A-T-T-L-E-S, five bucks a month. Did a podcast for the Patreon members tonight on Drake May and his mechanics. Talked about the Bruins goaltending situation a little bit as we get ready for the playoffs. And then pod four is tonight. I was just about to start putting... Notes together for tomorrow's podcast, 11 a.m. sharp on YouTube when this news came across. <laughs> and I said, of course, of course, but we'll do it, man. It's talking sports, not rocket science. I love doing it. I got a passion for it. And with all of you supporting uh, this show, uh, it means the world to me. So I'm ready. I was ready to go. Fourth pod. We do it, Ryan. Thank you to Ryan Shaw for that, uh, for that super chat. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe. So enjoy it for now. Thank Wick Grosbeck. Appreciate what they've built here. And hopefully they can finish the deal because that's the biggest question. They've been dominant in the regular season. They have literally, they have literally been one of the best teams in NBA history. This iteration of the Celtics that you're watching right now this iteration of the Celtics is one of the best NBA teams in regular season history. But it's regular season. And we knew coming in that this was going to be title or bust. Those are the expectations. And obviously, Stevens is telling us right now that it's championship or bust. Cool, genuine Phil jumps in with a super chat. Another super max for Nick. Thank you, man. I appreciate your cool, genuine Phil. I appreciate the support. So, Drew Holiday, four years, $135 million contract extension. The fourth year is a player option. He's 33 years old. He decided to decline next year's player option. He's going to make less money next year, but obviously a lot more money in the long term. He has secured the bag. And what I like about this, too, is that. Brad Stevens is a very genuine guy. He is. And when they traded for Holiday, you could see it in his face. I remember John Corrales, who does a great job at BSJ in the Locked On Celtics podcast. Love John's work. And I remember Corrales at the press conference when they traded for Holiday. He made a comment about how happy Stevens looked to Brad Stevens. And Stevens tried to, like, shush it away. But it was true. It was absolutely true. Stevens looked like a five-year-old boy waking up on Christmas morning when they traded for Holiday. He has wanted Drew Holiday for a long time. And when he had the opportunity to keep Drew Holiday, he was going to take advantage of that opportunity. He was going to pay what it had to take to keep this guy in the fold. He is a huge fan. And let's appreciate Holiday 
because we've been talking about finances and we've been talking about how this will impact the, the, the short term and long term. Drew Holiday came in and he showed everybody who he is. He's not worried about his stats. He's scoring less points. He's, you know, taking less shots. His usage rate is down. He doesn't care. He wants to win. When he came here, we all knew this guy was all NBA defensive team. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous what he can do on the defensive end. But Joe Missoula challenged him. And Missoula changed his role defensively. He's played a lot of free safety, so to speak, on the floor this year. That's not what he did. Before he came here, he didn't do that. So when you talk about a player, he's won a championship, right? He's been on an Olympic team. When you talk about somebody who has that cachet, 33 years old, one of the sage veterans of this basketball team, for him to subjugate his ego like he has says a lot about Holiday. He ain't worried about your points. He ain't worried about your counting statistics. He's not worried about changing his role dramatically defensively, even though we all know the guy is ridiculous on that end of the floor. He's willing to subjugate that ego and do what he has to do to help the team win. That's what he does. And he's been rewarded for it. Bleep happens. Super sticker, $5 super sticker. Thank you. I appreciate that. Again, all the support. Can't say enough about it. Can't say enough about the super chats, the super stickers. Everybody that has clicked that thumbs up to help build this community means the world to me. I'm on the grind, baby. It's a full grind. One man band, one man show, Nick Cattle show with you. So thank you to everybody who's given that thumbs up. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed to this channel. And all of those that continue to support this program means the world to me. It's the only way I can survive, frankly, right now. That's what we do. So I appreciate that. That's why I jump on, say breaking news, breaking news. That's what we do. Got to do it. So a big time deal for the Celtics, a big time deal for Drew Holiday. Let's hope they can finish this now. Let's hope that they can run through the tape, as Chris Weber said years ago. Let's hope that this Celtics team can run through that tape. Because now they are set. If they run through the tape this spring and this early summer, if they can run through that tape this year and they can put up that banner 18, they are now in position to bring back their top nine, 10 players on this roster to make another run at it, to defend that banner, to defend that championship. But first things first, they've got to do it. Dan Hansen with another super sticker. Thank you. I appreciate it. You guys are knocking me over here with these super stickers and super chats. Can't say enough about it. I know I sound like a broken record, but moved across the country, left my job in Sacramento, originally from here, was making good money in Sacramento. We were killing it. Radio show was doing really well. Moved back for family reasons. And this right now is my passion. It's my pulse. It's what keeps me going. So all of you who help that and support that, it's not just word service I'm giving you, not just lip service, not just flapping the gums. I honestly mean it. It means a lot to me. Every buck means something. And as I try to continue to survive and build this thing, the super stickers, the super chats, the chats, the subscriptions, the likes, all of those things, just big, just big. Danell Ruffin says, Brad is a better GM than coach. He is. He is. And I thought Stevens was a top five coach when he was in the league. And, and I know some people will disagree with that. That's fine. We can agree to disagree. I thought Stevens was a top five coach. Spolstra was number one. You obviously have to look at Pop and, and what he had done. Steve Kerr also up there. Rick Carlisle, very good. I thought Stevens was in that bunch. He was in the conversation. But he is a better GM than he was a coach. He has done a spectacular job running the personnel side. And I don't say that lightly. I, I just don't say that lightly. He does a spectacular job. No joke. I mean, the only thing that I didn't like that Stevens did was 
he didn't keep Bo Bo. <laughs> well, and out of all the moves he's done, if I'm sitting there nitpicking about Bo Bo, that tells you how good he's been. He's tremendous. As far as who's responsible for him coming to Boston, you can thank Danny Ainge. And I think when we, if they can finish the job, Stevens will be looked at as the guy that got, got them over the hump this time around, right? Danny, obviously, responsible for the big three. But you can look at this and you can say, hey, man, Ainge, much like when Theo in 04 won it, right? When the Red Sox won it all in 04, you could look back and, and you can credit Dan Duquette for a lot of things. The Heathcliff Slocum trade. You know, Derek Lowe, Jason Varitek, signing Manny Ramirez, Pedro Martinez. And Theo came in, and he did enough to put him over the hump. He added Kurt Schilling. He added Keith Folk. He added David Ortiz. He added Kevin Millar. He added Bellhorn. But Duquette helped build a chunk of that nucleus that ended up winning the World Series. And there's no way that you can tell this story of the Boston Celtics. If they win, if they win a championship, if they end up winning multiple championships, if we're sitting here in 2030 talking about multiple-time champions, whatever the case, Danny Ainge, man, Danny Ainge. He pulled the trigger. I'm old enough to remember when people were upset when they traded Pearson Garnett to Brooklyn. There were people who were upset. I wouldn't say it's the majority. I think I'd be being disingenuous if I said that. But there were a number of people that did not like that trade. Didn't like it. Some of them, the same people that didn't like trading Al Jefferson for Kevin Garnett. Think about that for a minute. But there were people that did not like that deal. They wanted another run at it. And Ainge absolutely pantsed, pantsed the Nets. But that's one thing. One thing is making that trade. But then... You've got to nail the picks. And when you look at it, when we talk about this with the Patriots, having the third pick in the draft and how you have to nail that because it's the third pick. And if you swing and miss on that kind of a pick, it can hurt you for years. Same can be said about those Nets picks. Yes, the Nets got pantsed. But then Ainge had to pick the right guys. He picked Jalen Brown. I like Jamal Murray better than Brown in that draft. I think, you know, when you look at it, hindsight, you would have been fine with either guy. But he picked Jalen Brown when people were wondering, can Jalen Brown shoot? Is he ever going to make that transition from Cal to the NBA? Can he do it? He picked Jalen Brown. And then, of course, the stroke of brilliance, the Jason Tatum trade down and pick. He got an extra first-round pick, folks, to draft Jason Tatum. Absorb that. Soak it in. <laughs> Ridiculous. And he drafted Marcus Smart. And you look back at that draft. Smart was a pretty good pick, man, when you look at the rest of the people that were drafted in, the, in that draft. He didn't always hit, obviously. But, yeah, Danny Ainge, they could finish the job. He's got a huge role in this, gigantic role in this. But Stevens has done a fantastic job of adding, right? of adding to this mix. So we'll see what happens. All right. Fourth pot of the day. I'm gassed. I appreciate every single one of you. I'm going to go now, pound out some notes for tomorrow's podcast, but I appreciate every single one of you. Again, before you leave, take a second, give us that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, trying to hit 3,000 subscriptions. Hopeful to do that by the end of this week. Rate and review if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Pods. It has been a lot of fun to be able to talk Celtics for 40 minutes. I haven't been able to talk Celtics this long in a long time. I miss, I miss talking about the Celtics. I just love talking about this team. I really do. So uh, I appreciate you. Thank you for joining the stream, whether it was on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, no matter. I appreciate it. And uh, back tomorrow, 11 a.m., Nick Cattle Show. One more time on a hump day. Well, hump night, I guess. Thank you. This is.